can't believe Dr. <laughs> fucking Phil beat me to the cart narc. Like, I, this is pretty pathetic. You are sort of the vessel for our righteous rage. I've seen videos where you've had a gun pulled on you. I've seen people try to run you over with their cars. The more were at times where I thought, okay, this could go badly, were just guys and their fists. But the first easy step is not getting within punching range. Hello and welcome to Is This Good, the show where we boldly, conclusively, and scientifically decide what things in this big wide world are good. I'm Matt Austin, and with me as always is production powerhouse Jason Doyle. Hello. Hi, JD. Thanks for coming. Skibby doo. Wee oo, wee oo. Today's guest is a highly trained, independent, non governmental agent who has made a career of calling people out for breaking one simple rule not returning their shopping carts. Over 500,000 narcoteers tune into his YouTube channel to watch him rove America's parking lots, where he risks life and limb to confront scofflaws with his rallying cry, Hey! That's not where the cart goes. His videos, which have racked up over 70 million views, tow a unique line of being very funny and often very fucking scary. His name is Agent Sebastian, but he's known the world over by another name, Cartnark. Agent Sebastian, a.k.a. the Cartnark, welcome to Is This Good? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, thank you. So maybe by way of intro, I'll explain how I came across your work. Um, so people know exactly what it is you do. So we do this segment on the show sometimes called Unpopular Opinions, where I'll go find people on the internet that have an unpopular opinion, and then we'll debate whether we think there's any merit to it. So I found one on Reddit that said, unpopular opinion, you do not have to return your shopping cart. And underneath it, every single comment was just, oh shit, you angered the cart narc. Uh-oh, <laughs> the cart narc's gonna come for you. Uh, don't tell the cart narc. And I'm reading them going, what or who the hell is the cart narc? So I look it up. I come to your YouTube channel. I start watch watching a video. And for anyone that hasn't seen it, basically, you've got a GoPro strapped to your chest. So it sort of looks like a first person shooter kind of point of view. You've a, a safety wand, like uh, the people that help land planes at an airport. And you survey the parking lot, waiting to see someone that has not returned your cart when you do. You make a noise like a police siren, as I just did at the start. Wee -oo, wee -oo. And maybe you can take it from there to explain the standard operating procedure of the cart narc. Well, yeah, the standard operating procedure is always give them the chance, give them the the free will to correct their mistake. So uh, they've, in most cases, deliberately avoided doing what they picking up it for themselves, essentially putting their cart back and. That's the first. So, with, so I usually will say, "Hey, that's not where the cart goes. It goes over there." <laughs> blah blah blah. Would you mind doing it? Now, there are times where they've already, you know, because of just how the situation unfolds, they're already inside their car. In which case, I'm very, you know, I've got the vest, big vest that says "Cart Narks," which, uh, admittedly, not everyone knows what that is, obviously. Uh, but I'm, I'm pointing at the cart. I'm pointing to where the cart return is. You know, here and there, here and there. Um, now, in the case where they don't. Through their own free will, take their cart back. I do not force them. There's no, uh, you know, twisting arms or anything like that. But I will give them a essentially a citizen's ticket, uh, which is a, a magnet that says something to the effect of, "I don't return my shopping cart like a jerk" or variations thereof, <laughs> and I'll put that on their vehicle somewhere. Uh, some people at that point just say, "Fine, I'm not taking it back," and they drive off and they're on their merry way. Uh, other people, however, uh, cannot stand having that smudge on their <laughs> ego, in my, in my opinion, and get out and want to have uh, a discussion and sometimes more than a discussion about the situation. Um, so I think it's probably, you know, the people that want to have the discussion, because when you watch your videos, sometimes you'll have a five, six, seven, eight, nine minute confrontation with the same person going back and forth. You're telling them to return the car. They say no. They start driving away. You throw a magnet on the cart. They stop the car in the middle of the parking lot. What the hell is this? They get out. They throw it back at you. They get back in the car. You throw another one on the cart. Um, and those are the ones uh, that I guess tend to go viral. But how many out of every, I don't know, hundred um, Wii U Wii U's where someone doesn't return the cart, how many of them turn into actual confrontations? Oh uh, yeah, it's. I really need to start like making good, like a little have a little notepad and be okay. This, this, this. 
it's it's probably 25% ish where they are just they're just stubborn and they are they are going to try to impose their will on me cuz like like you kind of mentioned there um they they stop their car and they're not, it's not like the, the the magnet has any kind of you know EMF pulse or <laughs> some kind of you know fuel additive to it they don't have to they can head out um <laughs> Especially after the second or third one, where they will stop and then get out. After that, they know what's going on. After the first one, even if they were fully ignorant to begin with, but after this, but they'll get out. Like you said, throw it at me, throw it on the ground, and I've got more than one. Uh, and so they'll get, but they get back and in and out and in and out and in and out. Sometimes five or six times, um, and that's probably only twenty five percent that are really adamant. Um, you know, probably half either just ignore it or don't care or give up. And then maybe that other 25% or so, I'm able to talk them, you know, I can kind of, even though they're initially resistant, they will, uh, you know, succumb to logic and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I'll do, I'll, you know, you're right. Um, well, assuming that, let's say, 100% or very close to the people know that as a human adult, when you're done with the cart, you're supposed to return it. Uh, why do you think that people get so upset when you simply say, hey, that's not where the cart goes. It's it has a lot to do. <laughs> this is going to sound obviously overblown, but it has a lot to do with criminal psychology. And I don't just mean from people who create you know create crimes, pr commit crimes. But think about back to when you were a little kid, and and the analogy I use all the time is uh, you got your hand in the cookie jar. Uh -huh. Is uh, you, you, your your parent walks in and you've done something wrong. Like, no, uh, what? No, it wasn't me. And not only are you like in in trying to deny your what, what happened, but then you get angry at the parent or, <laughs> or at some other situation. It's it's deflection, it's um it's lying. Cause they're having to because they know, like you said, they know internally that they're and they've seen this their entire lives. We have cart returns, many of which say please return carts here. Uh, you you know what's going on, but you're having to essentially lie to yourself and lie to me about why it didn't happen. And 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 any and there've been, been plenty of studies about lying and how that creates problems in your brain, creates anger in your brain. So the I guess the more primitive or juvenile brain isn't able to stop and say, okay, <laughs> I'm I'm silly, I'm lying, uh, or I was I was being lazy. Um, but it's also once you go down that path of of making excuses and lying, it's really hard as a human being, and really it takes actual a ton of emotional maturity to grab yourself by the collar and say, "Okay, wait a minute, let's settle this." Let's. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> right. it becomes a very it's a tough thing psychologically for a lot of people. Well, but have you been faced with the the reverse? Because I know you know one time walking my dog, uh, dog poops. I look down, don't have any bags, and someone was watching, and they're like, start yelling at me. And <laughs> my first reaction is to like turn and be like, "Hey, man, fuck you!" And, and then I and I'm like, I take a beat, and I'm like, "No, I am a hundred percent wrong." But it is almost impossible to not be angry at someone that is questioning you. Right. Well, and you, you raise a really good point there because it's it also has to do with attitude, and I would say that while that person is technically correct is at seeing what you were doing because they probably assumed you're just being lazy about it the right maneuver is not to immediately go on the offensive from mm -hmm. their from their point of view it's mm -hmm. not to be f you not to yell because you're right it you even if you're in the wrong are going to meet that with a proportionate response that's why the me as a cart narc i'm very polite very nice i'm all like i said i'm always giving them the easy out the polite, oh, hey, this is, you know, this isn't where that goes. Would you mind taking that over there? Excuse me. Um, so, you know, that's why I think people are so on my side, for the most part. Not, not entirely. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to some detractors, namely yeah. one <laughs> doctor who is not a Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, you're, you're right. You're, you're emotionally correct, as if there's such a thing in your response there. But the the next move would be to even say, hey, man, totally sorry. I'm going to go back, run back home. Uh, you know, you're exactly right. My bad. I apologize. Uh, you know, but but yeah, but that, that they're being them jumping up to 100 
is is certainly it it warrants your response a little better yeah i mean obviously one of the things that makes your channel so successful is the confrontation i mean obviously people like to watch uh people kind of going at each other or in your case often it's one-sided but i think that it would not work if you weren't a both funny and b such a contrast to their attitude so if they're at a level 10 there's something so funny to you being at a level one like for instance i die every time someone gets out of the car and is like you better get away from me i'm gonna I'm going to come over there and kill you. And you just go, sir, I don't know how you're going to do that. You are very old and I'm very good at running. Um, so another another thing that helps the humor is all the this whole lexicon, this whole world building you've done around the cart narcs. Like the fans are the cart narketeers. The people that don't return their carts are the lazy bones. When someone dumps a cart on the curb, you call it curbing. So did the lexicon exist from the start or did you sort of build it up slowly? No, it's it's still evolving, and that's a good point. Is that it is it is this uh, silliness. It's a very sort of Boy Scout. Uh, you know, I get I hear SpongeBob, Ned Flanders, <laughs> like this super polite um, Dudley Do Right for folks uh-huh. who are a fan of uh, old <laughs> Canadian Mountie yes. humor. <laughs> hey, we're both Canadian, so yeah. shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so that, yeah, it it is. It's, you know, it's, it's like, and I, uh, to, you know, obviously this is, again, I'm comparing, but as an example to like, when you have a well-built character, like a Borat, for instance, who has all this, like, you know, everything about his backstory and his wife and where he's from and so on and so forth. Yeah. That did not come fully, fully uh, prepared. It was sort of a development of like seeing how they react. And then in, it's the, it's the classic writing exercise as well if this then what else mm-hmm. if there's a guy who's out patrolling the parking lots by uh, you know enforcing these common decency rules what's his mindset uh he's what he's with an agency what would that agency be like what would their uniform be like you know that whole thing and yeah it's it's still hopefully developing well how, so how close is or would you say that the card arc is a character like how how close is the persona to the reality well the impulse is my impulse it's it, i fully agree with putting your card back of course uh i would be much more harsh and uh perhaps nasty and brutally honest with people kind of like your your friend with a dog poop um but again i i do try to layer it with as much silliness like you were saying which contrasts against their insanity um it's sort of a like a, a nicer version of a Bugs Bunny, I guess, where like, cause I'm kind of, I'm teasing them a little bit, kneeling them a little bit, not, you know, dumping, you know, I'm not <laughs> trying to think what he's, I'm not blowing their faces off with a shotgun with, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Daffy Duck style. You are dropping but anvils kind of, on their head, but they do. Right, right. I'm kind of poking <laughs> and, you know, it, metaphorically. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's not super close, but yeah, it is, it's a veneer of a character with my actual, uh, my actual cause beneath it. Right. Well, so at the off the top, I was saying that it's very funny, which I think is a lot of the appeal, but it is also very dangerous. Like I've seen videos where you've had a gun pulled on you. Um, I've, I heard that you've been pepper sprayed. I, I didn't see the video. I've seen people try to run you over with their cars. Obviously when you're running away backwards, it might be difficult for you to see a, a totally different car backing out or something like that. Um, what is the scariest situation you've been in or some of the scary situations yeah there i've never been i've had pepper spray displayed there was a lady who was the famous lady of uh she had three bulging discs dicks in her back is the way she mispronounced it <laughs> uh she had reached into her purse at the end of that video to pepper spray me uh and i say oh pepper spray and i'm getting out of there uh i know i've never because it's funny to hit hit the first part of that is I was in Louisiana earlier this year, or Agent Agent Bone Garcon was in Louisiana, and he walks up to a pe- <laughs> he's taking his car. He walks up to people who are talking about it because you can see they're pointing and talking. And this one guy is like trying to be a badass, and he tells the uh, employee, "Yeah, man, I saw a video where this dude got knocked the f out, or he got his ass kicked, or whatever he said." And it's like, "No, you didn't," because that that video doesn't like. Hey, it may exist at some point in the future, but there's a lot of that sort of like. And I get, I see 
people will text me, why don't you post the video that happened the other day where you got blah, blah, blah. Oh, so there's, so there's, there's, sort a, of there's a myth building. It's like, yeah, right. I saw the cart narc once. He was 10 feet tall and had arms <laughs> the size of tree but trunks. The people who, yeah, but the people who don't like me will create the other myth of, oh, he's been arrested and sued and beaten up and blah, blah, blah. They, they try to build their world around it. Um, but to the actual reality of what's ever happened, yeah, I've had a gun displayed at me twice, both in times in Texas. Um, I would say that, but in both those cases, for whatever reason, just because of I had a good angle, I was far enough away, I didn't really feel like even if they had pointed it at me and fired, they would have had a good chance of hitting me, which I know sounds weird, like an insane thing to say. <laughs> that, honestly, that does sound like an insane thing to say. I mean, like, I think we've all had the experience. I think I think that another reason it's popular is you are sort of, and I don't know if you agree with this, the vessel for our righteous rage. Like, you're driving in the car, someone cuts you off. You know, your impulse is, is to flip them off or be like, fuck you. You know, not are you an asshole, but you're endangering my life and other people's lives or someone that's just weaving in and out of traffic. But watching the news, I'm conditioned to see so many incidents of road rage that end in murder or serious injury. And I go, Ugh. Okay, swallow it. And with every time I swallow it, Sebastian, I feel like less and less of a man. But here you are, like someone's pulling a gun on you and they literally said, I got a six shooter and I'm about to put one in your chest. And and you're- That was also Texas, that was a separate time. <laughs> and, there, and no coincidence. I, I don't think there's anything that can be drawn from all three of these incidents happening in Texas. Um, how are you not scared? I don't, I don't fully understand that part of it. Well, the, the uh, to, to hit that original question, the more like where at times where I thought, okay, this could go badly, were just guys and their fists. But you could tell by the intent and their body language that they wanted this to happen. There was one in Florida and one in Hawaii where like, if I didn't get out of there fast, they were gonna stop at nothing to make sure that they struck me as hard as they could as many times as they could. Uh, and that's why, and people talk about this all the time, how do you not get hit? Well, the first easy step is not getting within punching range. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> and the people. But you see so many of these street fight videos. You see them every weekend at NFL stadiums where people, but again, because of their ego, they square up and right. they're like, okay, this is happening. I don't care if we are uh, out of shape, middle-aged, uh, drunk, uh, and on concrete, which by the way, is really way a great way to get hurt. Very seriously. I'm going to have a fist fight with this man. Uh, or a full-on wrestling match. It devolves into a wrestling match usually. Um, so yeah, the, the scariest ones were those where there wasn't even a weapon involved, where it's just this guy is absolutely enraged. And like you're mentioning, he's willing to do something about it. I think there was, I don't know if you saw, there was a story in the past few weeks out of Portland where road rage incident guy gets out of his car, walks mm -hmm. up and boom, in the chest. Not only that, but there's a like a bicyclist across the street who's videoing it because he's like, oh, well, something's happening. And he gets hit. He doesn't die, but he gets like the guy shoots him. Jesus. Um, that guy's arrested and in jail, which is great uh, for the, you know, for a lot of people, but not so great for the guy who's dead on the street. Right. Um, but yeah, to your, yeah. So yeah, that, that happens. But the main thing about that is being situationally aware, staying away. Uh, once they do present deadly force, fully disengaging. Um, you know, so it's, it, there's some common sense things that even though I'm doing something that is, you know, I always say, uh, Anyone could get hit by a bus, but most people aren't jumping in front of the bus. <laughs> right. <laughs> but because when you see the bus coming and you see that, you know, you kind of you take a step back and be be as sensible as I can be about it. Right. You are sort of going up to the bus with a little red cape and uh, <laughs> pretending it's a bull. Um, a little bit. Well, so if your if your life is online, I mean, I can't tell if you're wearing it now because um, the lighting's a little blown out. But are you wearing the bulletproof vest right now? The, that's actually it's in my it's in my trunk in my quote to go my go kit but this is actually my <laughs> original vest which is just kind of a um like one of those paintball vests or whatever you can oh, just okay. put little right, slots right. for stuff in it but it, uh same same idea essentially just not kevlar um yeah which by the way the kevlar vest was donated to me by a police officer who was a fan of my videos and uh saw guns and things being threatened to me and said hey i got a spare vest you want it absolutely <laughs> um well, haven't had to use it again haven't been shot at well i don't think off. it's something you use so much as absorb um yeah, right? but I, i'm glad that it's ne never happened but so considering you are putting your life on the line maybe to go backwards a bit why did you decide to die on the hill of shopping carts of all things i mean there are many indignities that we suffer as we're trying to live in a society here, things that annoy us every day. Why did you pick 
the shopping cart. It was well, I, I, I've and I always talk about how I've and and this happened in some of my videos, like uh, littering is another big one, uh, graffiti, dog poop, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, putting weights back at the gym, you know, <laughs> all these <laughs> sort of things one. where all of the category of of um, I, I'm not picking up after, my, after myself, even though I know I should, even though it's the system that's in place. I know that this I'm supposed to do this and this. That's that's the whole reason I'm here. But shopping carts, quite frankly, are the most easy one. It's a big item. You see it coming as soon as it exits the store. You know, it's it, it happens in one area for the most part in that parking lot. Um, you know, road rage, which I couldn't really enforce, obviously, although I have some ideas. Um, <laughs> I hate I'm like, I hate the fast and furious, reckless driver type because, they, they, you know, they're not accomplishing anything other than feeling cool. Right. And they're endangering everyone else. I mean, I sound like your mother here. They're in, they're making, but they really are. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, the shopping carts, it's, it comes down to it's the most easily easy one to do. It's if for just so from did, a so did logistics did you have a list standpoint. and then figure out which one you could actually enforce? Yeah. Well, oh, no, this came out of a conversation with the guy at work. We were both, you know, against the, you know, people who in my office, for one reason, there are people who will go to the men's room, wash their hands, take that towel mm -hmm. and they'll leave it on the counter. And the, I mean, it's not like we are in some weird uh, men's room that doesn't have a trash can right there in arm's length. And so we're talking about stuff like this, like what kind of animal can't just do that? And, and sometimes it's in the sink, even the towels. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you like that we've had now had to put um, a trash by the door so the people, they will take a paper towel once they're done washing their hands and then use it to open the door. And then before they were just balling it up and throwing it on the ground. So the, uh, you know, custodial staff was like, all right, well, I guess we just better put a garbage here. Cause these people clearly can't take it and find a garbage <laughs> from there. Right. And, and part of that is good engineering. And you'll notice like, I don't pick on a quote or quote, pick on choose lots that don't have cart returns. Not that there are many. Uh, I try to make it like I, especially now talking about the evolution of cart narcs is I will often start standing in the cart return. So I'm physically demonstrating this is a 10 second process or I, I just walked where, you know, where's the cart return? Oh, I just walked from there. You know, when I saw you do this. So that part of that's an, you know, engineering convenience thing totally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it, we we're dumbing things down <laughs> so badly. Uh, and actually, if you want to do a quick Google search of like shopping center parking lots in the up until like the 80s, they didn't even have cart returns out in the parking lot. You just you got your cart at the front of the store, you used it and then you put it back where you found it. But again, people have become like your like your trash can analogy. They become mm. so damn lazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, OK, we'll put some out. In the, oh, we'll put some out in the parking lot. Surely people will stop leaving their carts out then. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're, we're softly incentivizing people to put it away by making it as easy as possible. And they're still uh, not doing it. So still can't figure it out. So some of them. Well, so let's get to, to some of your detractors. And we're going to use Dr. Phil as the avatar here, because as I was looking you up, I see a YouTube video pop up, cart narc on Dr. Phil. I'm like, first of all, I thought I was like in touch with the culture and what's going on, but I was like, I can't believe Dr. <laughs> fucking Phil beat me to the cart narc. Like, I, this is pretty pathetic. Um, so, as you might be able to gather if you're listening, uh, Dr. Phil, not a fan of the cart narc. Uh, how, did the, how did that appearance on his show come out? You were in studio. Did you know that he was going to be against you? And he also brought on uh, someone who you had encountered in a parking lot in one of your other videos, did you know that you were going to be confronted by uh, someone who you had previously shown on Cartnarks? Yes, I, I knew what was going to happen. I didn't know the severity and the tone of how it was going to happen. Um, it was not an ambush in that sense. Uh, this for, for to, what happened was uh, I got a call or an email from, or not a call, they don't know my number. I got an email from one of his producers saying, hey, we'd like to come on. So, yeah, sure. And uh, he said that they were going to try to, f through like private investigators, find people who I confronted. Because <laughs> oh um, I, I don't have any of that information. I, right. I assume they would have had to go, you have to basically do a DMV search through a PI because uh, people say, oh, license plates, you need to blur those out. Well, how do you find some, how do you reverse look up someone's license plate? You can't. You have to have a special access for all that. So he said, again, this is secondhand. I'm relaying all this, obviously. He said they found like 20, they were able to locate and find like 20 something people. They originally had three who were going to come on and mm -hmm. uh, confront me. Um, 
And apparently toward the last 11th hour, uh, two of those people backed out. And the guy they got, un- and no offense to him, <laughs> I didn't even remember. I didn't even remember that video because it was it was a very it was like a, it was part of one. It wasn't a main video in of itself, I don't believe. And he was ve- he kind of like he gave me a little. We had a little lip back and forth, but it wasn't one of like the like a very memorable encounter. And so when they said like, oh, this so and so from this, I was like, really? Okay. But apparently he was the only one who was number one local. They would have flown people out, but local and didn't you know get cold feet. Um, it's like, all right, okay, I guess. Because I was, I was prepared for that. I don't think it would have been a good show if it was just me, you know. <laughs> uh, and they kind of had to pad that show, I think, for that reason, because they they were counting on people who who flaked on them. Um, and then they the producer the day of said, okay, this is going to happen. We're going to bring on this and this and this. But he didn't prepare me for how hard Dr. Phil was going to go with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Do- I, he Dr. Would bring up Phil, a point. yeah, I would he was it. on it. <laughs> yeah. He'd bring up a point. I'd rebut it. And uh, and then we just he'd bring up another point. I'd rebut it. There was not really a dialogue essentially, which I, I get part of that because it's a when you're there, it just moves and moves and moves, and he's got his schedule of stuff to get to. Um, but yeah, he was full on, uh, let's say, devil's advocate at, at the mildest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of his things he was like, well, aren't there more important things you could be doing, like feeding the homeless? Like, what a great story. And then I like you turn to the crowd and you're like, everyone's clapping for Dr. Phil. And you're like, How many of you people volunteered at a soup kitchen before you came to this TV taping? That's what yeah, I zero. Thought. Exactly. Well, because that's it's such an easy and, and people have said that to me in person, too. Like, you need to get a job, do better things with your life. What do you you know? They. Because it's such an easy throwaway line, and it's and you because it it paints the picture that oh, that must be what everyone's doing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's so cheap and easy, and quite frankly, beneath him. Which I mentioned at one point in the show, I was like, I thought you're because his deal, tr- historically, a Doctor Phil was, you know, kids respect your parents, be you know, own own up to your own problems, make yourself a better person, and here he is taking the side. Of the jackass who can't take their cart back. Yeah, that's the lazy true. bones. Yeah, the lazy yeah. bones. He he was harder on you than the cash me outside girl. <laughs> um, so in in this episode, I, one of the things the guy that was confronting you was upset about is you put his cart that he refused to return behind his car, so he would have to get out of his car and move it um, before he could back up. And he said you were. Uh, like forcibly imprisoning him. Uh, he, well, the, the term again, no offense to the gentleman, was entrapment. Entrapment, <laughs> which, which sounds right, but is a different thing. Yeah, you and Catherine Zeta Jones slinking under those laser wires, <laughs> the, both entrapment. Um, something I thought was funny is you said you had spoken to a lawyer and he had told you to stop doing that because it could be a gray area. What is that call? What do you call the lawyer like? And what what other opinions did he give you on your methods? That's really that's really is the main one is uh, cause that's, I, I sp- I've spoken since then uh, to multiple lawyers about it and the so uh, false imprisonment if you search false imprisonment arrests it's it has to do with kidnapping essentially it is you know domestic disputes someone locks someone in the basement that sort of thing like I would not get arrested for false imprisonment unless a cop and a district attorney really didn't like me. (laughs) But that was what my lawyer said is like, look, is a cart which can be rolled away by anybody, is that really false imprisonment? Mm -hmm. No. But you don't want to be, you don't want to spend the night in jail to find that out. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. You know, it's just, it'll be a pain for you, pain for everyone else. Um, So yeah, I was doing that. I called it the pit maneuver. I was doing that Cause I just saw one day I was out, you know, talking about the evolution of things. I was like, you know, what if, what if this happened? Cause I saw someone leave it behind someone else's car in the way like, well, how would they like it if that happened to them? And that, that's the, you know, golden rule. It was very simple. Um, so I was doing that for, I don't know, six months ish roughly. And uh lawyer finally said, Hey man, eh, it is be better if he didn't. So that, and then another lawyer mentioned that in a lot of States on public thoroughfares, uh, you really don't want to be throwing stuff at vehicles, mm. even if it's not harmful. So a magnet, which I try to place or lightly, gently kind of flop on a vehicle in the parking lot. And, you know, it, it, it's again, it's one of those things where am I doing any damage? No. But you'll notice 
before I, I never really follow people out on the street streets on the public streets because at that point yeah they're out in traffic uh, they, they, you know it's a safety issue at that point so i never really ever did that in general but another lawyer said hey in the case where they do that you know you probably just want to let them go which i was i was pretty like I said, pretty much already doing um, so I, I just keep, but I keep that in the back of my head in general. Yeah. I love, I love when you'll throw the, uh, magnet on someone's car and they just don't give a shit. They're like laughing and, and they just drive <laughs> away and you don't see them again. And you get, you call them an unrepentant lazy bones, <laughs> which is, yeah. uh, um, well, that's the thing is that the lack of care about other people really, I mean, at that point, because I don't force people because I, I, inc- I count on a conversation and engagement to actually discuss things with people. Um, you know, if they're just like, Hey, screw the world is I can't do much about that. Yeah. The yeah. magnet on the car is often the tipping point for them. That's the peak for them. It's, it's, we're having a confrontation. I'm in my car there. I'm starting to drive away. You, I mean, I, I've seen you ninja star those things on there. It's amazing. And then that's when they lose their shit and they get out of the car. And that's what it seems like they want to fight you. What is it about? a person's car that makes them go crazy like that because obviously it's just a magnet right right and i think it it's it's several fold because i've um it it has to do with ego but it's also car, car culture yeah. and how much we identify ourselves with our car because you'll use you'll see in these uh, in the and you'll hear them say this is my effing car you don't touch my car <laughs> this is my vehicle <laughs> And it's very much a, a a more more of American centric version of this is you know my the car is me. Yeah. Uh, this is because you know of our roads. I guess you could go back. I guess and analyze you know the highway system built in whatever in the forties <laughs> and how we become such so car you know car dependent in this in this culture. I get that comment from Europeans a lot too. It's like why do these Americans care so much about a car when he's not doing anything to their car? <laughs> Uh, so I think it's it's a combination of those two things. It is, you know, it's ego, but also ego wrapped up in car culture. It's my favorite, especially when it's a complete shit box as well, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> those are the best. Yeah, that happened like, a month or two ago where the guy's like, this is my car. How dare you put that magnet on? And I kind of like, I didn't even call it, the, you know, that word like that, even though I, I would want to. <laughs> uh, but the cart narc would never do that. <laughs> And I was like, well, really, dude? What do you care so much about? That? Oh, then, then, then he turns that against me. He's like, you call my car a piece oh, of crap? I saw oh, this how one. dare I saw you? This you know, one. maybe I, I'm a working man. This is all the only car I got. What do you, you think you're better than me? Oh, okay. You know, so they'll take, that's the thing I found too, which is, again, I, so much of Cart Narcs is, is discovered in the process of it is it, it shows about how like humans love wedge issues where like you'll find one little thing. You know, and then take that off into a full, that's that's the conversation now, right. not, hey, you left your cart block in this handicap spot. It's, nope, all these other things. Right. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's interesting that it all goes back in history to history. It's truly a shame Henry Ford was not around to see cart narking. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he would have had some opinions. Uh, you might think this is a strange comparison, but when I'm watching your videos, what I'm thinking about is the Hurt Locker. Do you remember that movie with Jeremy Renner? He's uh, vaguely. Yes. He's a bomb disposal expert. Uh, I think it's. Is it the Iraq War, JD? Yeah. Yeah, and he can't stop doing it because he's addicted to the adrenaline. And uh, okay. even though he knows it's incredibly dangerous and life threatening, he keeps going back to it because yeah, he's addicted to that rush. Are you addicted to the adrenaline of cart narking? Uh, I would say no, because it it honestly, it's not an adrenaline rush. <laughs> uh, it's because people say, oh, my God, there's people. I don't go around on an average afternoon and have people threaten to beat the hell out of me. <laughs> but because I've done it so much, it, it's so it's very much a oh great. Another one of these guys. It's more now I would say it's more not addictive, but I find it way more entertaining because it's very much. I am a cat and there's a mouse. I know what they're going to do for the most part. Now they have fun little eccentricities in their responses, little cute, you know, weird things that surprise me, but that's, and that's always interesting as well. But I, I, I'm playing from a a stacked deck. I, you know, I'm, I'm morally in the right. I've seen this a thousand times. So at that point, it's just more like a fun, how can I play with them? (laughs) Which again, sounds kind of mean when I say it that way, but again, I'm doing it as nicely as possible. (laughs) 
Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not hurting them. I'm not, I'm, you know, only thing I'm damaging is their ego. Again, in, in the best scenarios, they learn something from it, God forbid, which I, I you'll hear me when people actually turn around, uh, you know, in character, of course, but I am legitimately so happy when someone, you know, says, God, I'm sorry, man. Like, I, I that that's the rush, quite frankly. Uh, is like, oh yes, thank God, <laughs> because otherwise it's, it does get pretty dreary to just see like, uh, you know, humanity fails again and again. Right, right. Uh, yeah, well, you're truly doing the Lord's work out there. Uh, before we continue, just some quick housekeeping for us over here. If you'd like to support the show, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash is this good. You could sign up now for a free trial to listen to uh, this week's Great Beyond, which is Patreon only. I know I said that last week, but this time I really mean it. And of course, you could send topics for future shows to is this good pod at gmail.com. Uh, Sebastian, right now, I want to do a little segment with you where unfortunately, everything's bad. It's time to play Pick Your Poison. All right, so here's how it works. I'm going to give you some related options that are all bad, and you have to pick your poison. So whichever you consider the least worst option, and they're all little pet peeves, maybe some things that you considered narking on before you got to the shopping cart. So the first category is driving, all right? So you got four options here. So you, remember, you're picking the least worst option. So put yourself in the position of thinking you're gonna have to do one of these, so here are your choices. Number one, tailgating. Number two, texting while driving. Number three, going slowly in the left lane and not moving over. Or number four, taking up two parking spots. So pick your poison here. <laughs> Maybe you want to start off by eliminating the ones you think are definitely the worst. Yeah, I think texting while driving, even though it's so common and prevalent these days, is the worst, From a mo number one, dangerous, obviously. Um, but number two, you see it, I see it probably every day where you know, especially you're waiting on a left turn and you're like waiting and mm -hmm. I try to be very judicious with my horn. I try to use it almost only when it's like really actually, you know, Hey, I, someone's going to crash. Um, but you, you see that they're waiting. Oh, oh, they're on their phone, you know? So it's, it's, it's dangerous, but also sucks. That's my, that's my worst one. Can you roll down the uh, window and throw the ninja star magnet <laughs> at them to get their attention? <laughs> well, actually I have an idea on that one and it's, it would be, it's sort of a bigger long play cause it's, it's a crime. Uh, or not crime, it's ticketable in pretty much every state uh, and province now, I'm sure. Um, but you would basic, because I, I, I can't really, like with that and the, you know, with the, the, the aggressive driving we talked about a while ago, um, there there are people for this, they're called the police. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and, and to confront people doing this would be actively dangerous for everybody uh, in, a, in a roadway. But maybe something where like you're, you're, you're you've got a telephoto, lens and you set up at a date at an intersection that's notorious for this and you're just taking photos of you know what's on their screen you know what was so important <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have to it would take a little bit of private investment you know some money here but you have to then find their their home address i wouldn't dox anybody of course but maybe like a billboard in their <laughs> in their area <laughs> or a yard sign not at their house of course i'm very anti-doxing of all kinds uh, as far as personal information goes, but in the neighborhood, you know, this person texts and drives, that sort of thing. This person weaves in and out of traffic, but that's a long way of answering the, the, that's uh, my hey, worst well, one. Well, if, if you need a PI, I know Dr. Phil has some you can uh, get your hands on. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, so you're definitely not texting. Right, and then uh, out of that, I think tailgating number two worst because again, the danger factor, um, I don't really see it that much anymore in my, but again, I'm not a, I haven't got a, I haven't even been pulled over in a decade, probably. And that's not to be like some, you know, oh, humble brag, <laughs> you know, some super goody two shoes. But I think after the age of like 23 or so, people just like guys, especially like, I, I don't need to be going that fast. What, what am I getting out of this? You know? Uh, so I, yeah, but it's still, it's dangerous, obviously. And, and it, and stressful for the person you're tailgating behind. Uh, then going slow in the left lane, uh, the fast lane, right lane, if you're in uh, England, I guess. Um, beyond Thank that, you for including that our sucks. international listeners. We do appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Because, yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah it, 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 it screws up the traffic flow, sucks for everyone else. 
and then taking up two spots. Um, I've done some park narcs. I do have little magnets that Ooh. I get and people because people have suggested that to me. And there's, you know, giant Facebook and Instagram groups for people who park like a-holes. But it's not as common as you think. It's it's not because I'm in parking lots a lot. I see a lot of parked cars, so it's remarkable when I notice. <laughs> Humble <cruiser>. brag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of y'all are like, oh, I, I hang out with you know supermodels. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm in a lot of parking lots, um, and so, but I it's it's notable when I notice a truly bad parking job because people a lot of times they have a big truck, they park in the back, out of the way. I totally acceptable, but um, so but I but I did make park narcs magnets, and in fact, one of those uh, became nearly violent. Uh, earlier this year in LA, when this guy uh, threatened and tried to punch me for uh, for putting a magnet on his car because he parked in the damn driving lane, blocking a handicap access area, uh, and uh, but he didn't want to be told. Um, okay, so there you have it, folks. He's parking in two spots, and if I see him, I'm throwing a cart, uh, park narc magnet on him. All right, right. Um, uh, again, they're all bad, but that's the way the game goes. All right, next category: the great outdoors. So here we have. Not picking up your dog's poop, which we discussed. Blocking the sidewalk to take a series of selfies. Littering or blasting music from a Bluetooth speaker on a hike. All right. These are all good. Good, bad. Um, <laughs> littering, obviously. What a, that's the highest compliment I've ever received. <laughs> <laughs> littering because it, it, it potentially sticks around for years. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a long-term uh, issue. And... It, it, people are it's just as an eyesore uh but obviously you know animals do end up eating that stuff there's there's a story just last week about um in uh, the grand canyon area people were doing which this i think started in paris and has kind of gone everywhere now they do the locks of love mm-hmm. where you take a, a padlock and I, th- I guess you put your name on it with your your and you lock it onto. I think in Paris there was a bridge that they eventually had to clear because it was too much weight for the bridge. <laughs> but other other cities started doing it, and now it's gone everywhere because I can't just tell someone I love them. I have to leave a, a lockout. Yes. In this case, it, near a national park. So, but the, 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 but to put an icing on this crappy cake is not only they're leaving a lockout in an area designed for wildlife and to be pristine, they then take the key and because you don't want you know our, our love is unbreakable, they just throw it and uh birds are eating them they're eating the keys so there's x-rays of these like condors with 15 keys in their stomach (laughs) which kills them eventually obviously um so yeah that's just one form of litter but it's that's the worst kind of litter it's the it's the self-aggrandizing litter it's i'm gonna do this for instagram uh and and screw you condors (laughs) so that's my worst one uh number two is going to be the bluetooth speaker which has unfortunately become more, it's replaced what I guess was the classic 80s movie boombox on the New York City subway <laughs> as far as just noise pollution. I know, but those were heavier. I feel like people weren't bringing them on hikes. And uh, <laughs> living in LA and being outdoors a lot, this is everywhere. At least once a hike, someone's going by with a Bluetooth speaker. Really? That's cl- oh, yeah, it's, it's insane. I, I, I'm, not a, I'm an LA person, but I'm not a hiker. Uh, and I... I, so I'm not aware. I have the same response that you do. But oh, I'm not we need park because... narcs. Oh, I guess you already said park narcs, yeah. but this would be national park narcs. This is, yeah, yeah, park with a park, <laughs> the outdoor parks. Um, but you hear it. You still you get it on subways, metros, train stations, that sort of thing. I get it. I see that and hear that uh, more specifically in gyms, hmm. um, where not 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 like the Planet Fitness style gyms because they will enforce the no you know put your damn earbuds in. But like I've got a gym in my apartment complex where once a month. I'm in there and some dude wants to make sure he doesn't know that earbuds ever existed, uh, but wants to make sure that everyone's listening to what I'm listening to, you know, which is just, it's so careless and thoughtless and noise pollution-y. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely do hate it. It's my number two for that reason, because it affects a large swath of people. Number three, so we had uh, stopping in the middle for a selfie. What was the other one? Uh, not picking up your dog's poop. Ah, uh, I think technically not picking up your dog's poop is worse because it does last longer, even though it does biodegrade, but it's, there's going to be hundreds of other people that are going to possibly step in it. You know, that sucks uh, for that number of people for the next week or heck, in LA and you know, at the right time of year, it's not going to rain. Uh, so you gotta wait for that thing to dry out. <laughs> uh, and then number four, the selfie semester, thing. While I okay? do dis, <laughs> I, I really appreciate what's that Instagram account? Uh, Influencers in the wild, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
genius account because I and uh, I wish I, I was one of those things. I mean, I people say I wish I had the idea for card narcs. I wish I had an idea for influencers in the wild because just to watch these people preen and pose and go on and just for a long periods of time for what you know <laughs> essentially but especially when like you're saying it, it get out of the way okay we, no one cares about your modeling shoot but but then they here. get mad at you if you walk oh. into their shot right right yeah like i'm trying to pose here yeah well that's not what the trail's for <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's 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 i have an ideas about that about like not for card narcs, but for like some where you're kind of like you go to interview them like they're actually, oh, my God, you're a model. Wow. When did you get your contract? You know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, something. <laughs> who knows? Maybe not fully fleshed idea. <laughs> All right. So, but yeah, because it is it is mostly less long lasting, although obnoxious, that's my la my least bad. All right. And uh, final category and pick your poison. This category is called public life. So out and about uh, we have here not tipping. Then we have taking your socks off on an airplane. And just to up the ante there, let's say you're putting those bare tootsies on the armrest in front of you just to make it extra bad. Uh, number three, eating smelly food on public transit. And number four, talking in a movie theater during the movie, of course. So which Ooh, what's uh, the poison you're good. picking here? And I think my general rule is going to have to be how many people are affected. And uh, that's going to be the movie theater is the worst one because, yeah, you're, you've got – hundreds of other potentially hundreds of other people that you that you say you know what my conversation is more important than the <laughs> ticket you paid for because i want to do it so again selfishness me first no no <laughs> concept of the general public um after that the smell well my, my, by the way most metros uh to use the the fancy european term uh most public transit have rules against eating on the train now they're not observed or enforced um but yeah, that, to me, that's it happens on planes too, where someone will get like a big old hot whatever from the from the uh, you know got some ribs from the TGI Fridays to go. I, I didn't have time to finish them, but I guess we're opening them up. Um, and it's funny, I've had this this we had this debate with somebody at work recently, like, well, how, why is it that food in non-food situations suddenly is bothersome? You know, because if it's decent food. You would love that if you were eating it, but I guess it's one of those things where you're not ready, you're not in a food mood. I'm sure some psychologist has done a study about why food in offices and trains and planes is bad, but you know, restaurant is great. But yeah, it affects a lot of people, so that's my next one. And then from there, the probably the foot one because it's so unnecessary. Um, you know, it's you have socks. <laughs> <laughs> and you have clean socks too. I, I will admit, I especially on longer flights, I am a shoes off, socks on oh. person. Whoa, this might we got this him, might Matt. be the wedge issue. <laughs> wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> However, they are fresh socks. Mm. Always fresh socks. Uh, it's and fresh shoes for the most part too. Although not fully fresh, I understand that. But yeah, it's I I it's and by the way, there are a lot of like if you go on certain overseas flights, they give you slippers. Like they 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 know that you will be taking your shoes off, especially on long haul flights. Um, maybe not in you know, especially in first class, and you know <laughs> if you can afford it. <laughs> um, so it's not it's the the it's not the if done properly, it should affect nobody. But yeah, the bare feet, especially up on the you, there are tons of pictures of guys. I've taken them myself. Of they'll like get that big foot and kind of wedge it like kind of up the side of your your uh -huh. seat from behind. I'm looking looking down like what? The oh God, come on, man. <laughs> That's my number three. And then uh, the last, I'm sorry, last one. Uh, I guess that would be not tipping. 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 Yeah. Oh, well, that's tough. That's tough because <laughs> tipping really should be up there. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, it sucks. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll flip those because yeah, if you're in a if you're in a t you know a situation where you know you got to tip, it, it's you know unless you have a great reason like the the, the server told you to f off. Uh, yeah, that I'll, I'll flip those because yeah, that's that's a real jerk move. Uh, yeah, I I would definitely say it's not tipping because what what is that expression like? Uh, you know, you, mur you one person is killed and it's a tragedy. A thousand people are killed and it's a statistic. Like tipping, you know the person. It's the one person that you're stiffing and they know who stiffed them. You eat smelly food on public transit. Yes, you're inconveniencing many more people, but you know they're probably going to forget about it. So mm -hmm. I'm probably picking that one. 
Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's a good one. I, I had forgot about that one because that's that's really again. I've been a waiter. I've been a bartender. I, I'm, I've been on the other end of that uh, certainly. Um, but yeah, it, it's it just seems like it's so inconscionable these days. Yeah. I, don't, I, I can't remember a time I was even, ever stiffed, quite frankly, and I for several years, high school and, and thereafter. Well, uh, you, yeah, you are very definitely... fast. You could have chased them out. <laughs> JD, don't you have a story? Yeah, no, from it your... definitely sucks, and it's a, it's a dick move. Uh, yeah, so. Um, JD, don't you have a story from your waitering days of chasing someone out of the restaurant that tipped like one penny or something like that? Uh, I've never, I've chased people up for not paying the bill completely. Yeah. But I've definitely, I, not me personally, but people have, uh, chase people out for for not tipping i wouldn't i wouldn't do that as a server i just wouldn't i mean it all comes out in the wash as they say oh, but if you had half the guts and integrity of the cart narc <laughs> you would do it but you see well like at that point what are you gonna do like yeah exactly <laughs> it's like you know. i paid my bill I, I, I'm, a, I'm a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, they, I think what, they, what can you do? They probably know they're a jerk. Uh, all right, Agent Sebastian, there's only one thing left to do, and that's play subjective trivia. All right, subjective trivia, it's just like regular trivia, except only I know the answer. So we know you love carts, we know you love shopping carts. I don't know if they're your favorite type of cart, but today's question is, aside from shopping carts, what is the best kind of cart? (laughs) Here are your options. Luggage cart, go-kart, dim sum cart, golf cart. Now, I have my answer written right here on this card, and ideally, we try to get our answers to match up. We try to mind meld. Uh, but you could talk it through with JD. He has not seen my answer. But aside from shopping carts, well, let me ask you: Would you have shopping carts number one if it was an option? I mean, uh, it's kind of—it's got to be. <laughs> uh, no, I, well, uh, this guy loves shopping carts. <laughs> it's so dim sum cart. Is that basically like a street vendor cart? It's like a no, food that's cart? like you go to a dim sum uh, uh, restaurant, Chinese like sort of banquet style restaurant, and they roll it around to your table. So you don't just order okay. something and then they go out and bring it to you. They roll it around and then they're like, oh, here's some shumai. Oh, like oh, there's some oh, the hargao carts coming around. So you're just grabbing it off the cart. Like a dessert cart. So yeah, right it's a, dis- a dessert cart. Basically, same okay. idea. Um, now I'm going to get best, obviously that's the subjective part. Now, uh, so you get the most useful, most pleasurable. And I think the answer on all of those has got to be golf cart. Okay. Because it is so much fun to drive. Yeah. Do you uh, golf? It gets you around. I, I do not. Okay. Uh, not against it. Just, it, it it's kind of, it, it's. I think what the reason that Top Golf is so successful is because they've taken <laughs> the fun they've taken the fun of golfing and condensed it where you're not walking around you know a giant multi-acre facility for 3 4 hours that's right. you're just hitting balls yeah, having that, food hanging out with your friends yeah. the worst part of golfing is the tiny modicum of exercise that you might inadvertently get from it so <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. it is nice that's that right. Top Golf came the, along it, the best thing is drinking and whacking stuff Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and getting to leave whenever you want. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, JD, are you agreeing uh, with that? Okay, so it's dim sum, car, uh, uh, golf cart. What were the other two? Go kart, luggage cart. I mean, let's be honest. It's not going to be luggage cart, it's, it's just a, a glorified cart. dolly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now, Sebastian, this is what Matt thinks. To me, I mean, it, you said it's fun to drive a go kart, but it's way more fun to drive a go kart. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. So go karts are very fun. Yeah. I would agree. But I know um, Matt is such a foodie. It's got to be the dim sum cart. That's what I'm. I'm going with. Okay. Well, dim sum cart was my second choice. Ugh. Unfortunately, you both got it wrong. The answer is go kart. Go kart. Yeah. I mean, I should have went with my first gut. There's honestly more of a chance that you will come into contact with a golf cart, either from golfing, which I don't do, or at some sort, of maybe in a resort or some sort of festival, street festival. But a golf cart, it just takes you back to being a kid. It only goes a certain speed, so you could just keep your foot on the <laughs> pedal and. Uh, race your friends and uh, so go kart is my answer but there is absolutely no penalty for not getting it right but it's subjective so did you get it wrong you know who's to say <laughs> um before we go uh, agent sebastian um is there an end game for cart narcs like is there a goal you're trying to reach like do you see this going forever 
Uh, that's a that's a good question. And uh, people say, well, if you, you know, they sort of say sarcastically, well, if everyone would put their cart back, you'd be out of a job, cart narcs. And, well, <laughs> and that's, that's the this dream. Is true. Uh, but uh, there are always other issues in the world, and and um, that hopefully I can find an entertaining and interesting way to explore. Um, next steps for cart narcs. I'm I'm planning on sort of maybe like a maybe more of a a sit down show where we kind of analyze different things, maybe kind of break down videos, old okay. videos, go over messages, you know, think, go, explore carts that are in the news, which is more than you would think. <laughs> which is more than well, you think. What was the last cart that was in the news? Uh, there was, oh, there's one out of uh, England where some some kids man, it did like a 25 foot light pole and hooked a cart over the top and left it up there. Hmm. <laughs> that was it. Okay. It, it, Local news. Local news. Uh, but yeah, there's ones where people throw carts through other. Uh, there was a sad one where a panhandler rammed a cart into the back of an old man who didn't give him any money, which is you know kind of sad. Good news is they caught the guy. Um, but yeah, more you know good good people versus bad people. The private messages I get, which are not again ninety ten ninety percent great, but ten percent very nasty. I think there used to be. I think it was on MTV, an old show where in the early days of the internet they would like find people who wrote hate messages and like bring like a professional wrestler along and, and confront them. <laughs> it sounds familiar. Yeah. I think mine would, I wouldn't be, you know, again, not to be, I, I don't want to be intimidating or scary, but I've collected a lot of those messages. <laughs> a lot of them are from personal Facebook accounts that are very, like, I don't have to do much research to find out who they are because it's their face Facebook account. Um, so things of that nature kind of expand upon and maybe explore the different because like I say, it's, it's, you'd think, oh, it's just shopping carts, but there's so much more to it I have discovered since doing it. Um, but now where will it end? Hopefully not with me in uh, in the hospital or worse. Um, and and beyond that, it's uh, it could be a lot like, um, you know, like let's take Reno 911. Mm -hmm. That was out years ago, took a break, came back, you know, with the whole streaming and internet world, uh, shows can do that now. You can... You know, or or call. And that's not a real show, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, you could take a break, hiatus, do other stuff, bring it back. You know, or just do, or do like a lot of podcasts do now, where they do seasons. Yeah, we're gonna do twelve episodes mm -hmm. for these three months. Go on our merry way and come back next year. So maybe it might be more segmented like that. Uh, these are all options on the table. Uh, you do have, sort of have a Lieutenant Dangle vibe to you, actually. Now, now that you mention it, and you know, on the show, well, yeah, that's um, yeah, he's a good goody two shoes, goody two shoes, uh, not, yeah. yeah, that sort of but thing. But also funny. Uh, you got to do a thing in the show where you do like a soapbox racer style thing, where you get in the shopping cart. I mean, I know it's against your principles to take the shopping cart outside of the confines of the parking lot, but you've seen like uh, video, internet videos of people racing each other in shopping carts. So yes, that, that uh, and there are ways that are modified. Speaking of go karts, there are people who have definitely modified go karts with and like just taken chopped up a shopping cart, kind of made that the frame or the ca outside cage. Uh, I would even need to be electric, so it didn't make any noise. Most go karts are pretty pretty darn noisy with those little engines, mm -hmm. um, but that's that's on the table. Um, all right. Well, where do you want to send people, Agent Sebastian? Where can people find you? Oh uh, yeah, cart narc C A R T N A R, just like on the vest here, uh, on any major platform. It, uh, one caveat being TikTok is, and quite frankly, when I'm out and about, people say, "Oh, because I'm wearing this this style vest," they'll say, "Oh, it's the cart narcs. Aren't you the guy from TikTok?" And I say, "Well, sort of. Uh, TikTok. I had a channel. TikTok said it was quote." Uh, people engaging in dangerous activities, AKA me putting myself in danger. Hmm. Uh, and they, so if you go to at cartnarks on TikTok, I'll do it right now. And it should have no actual accounts. TikTok.com slash cart. Okay. Narcs. Well, you've got the, however, uh, you've got a lot of people say, have re-uploaded my video. Oh, so there are hundreds okay. of millions of cart narcs hits. They can't yeah. take us all down. <laughs> yeah. 404 not found. So there are like compilation channels slash, uh, fan channels out there that where people are most people are finding me from or a lot of people are these days um so but know that if you're like messaging those channels no idea who that is so don't <laughs> i hope to god they're not responding like hey come here buddy or you know <laughs> yeah i was gonna but say on every other platform cart narcs is it's it's uh, the official stuff it's the official thing i was gonna say that you were saying how you had the 
Facebook names of people that have written you hate messages and you're storing them away for the future. <laughs> well, guess what? The entire country of China, you're on notice for preventing them from being on TikTok. So that's it's it's a whole country. Um, can't thank you enough for coming on the show. I mean, you are a truly fascinating person. It's a fascinating account. And it's just one of those things where if you commit hard enough to a bit, people will find it and you will be surprised at how much uh, how much you can get out of a very simple sounding idea. Well, that's that's the thing, because there are people, especially in like radio and local television who say, well, we do like we did a bit where we did this and that. I'm like, yeah, commit to it, develop it over time. And again, not, again, I use this as a point of comparison and admiration, but that's all that like Borat and Ali G and uh, uh, Bruno is for Sasha Baron Cohen and Bad Grandpa was for Johnny Knoxville mm -hmm. and Eric Andre, his character. It's just a, a character doing a funny, silly thing in a specific style, but they really worked at it and consistency and repetition. Like, like you said, you can you can build these fun little worlds out of these you know simple ideas. Um, all right. Well, hopefully you never find JD or I being lazy bones yeah, and certainly not will. unrepentant lazy bones. And you won't because we return our carts. Uh, again, support the show Patreon, patreon.com slash is this good. Subscribe to is this good wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts and subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Thanks to JD. Thanks so much to Agent Sebastian, the cart narc, for coming on. Thanks in advance for leaving a five star review for everyone. I'm Matt Austin, and this was good. We'll see you next week.